Interior sedan, after midnight. The anticipation is at its pinnacle. Holy shit! Told you. Yeah, but she's not going to. Oh, yes she is. I'd agree. No way. Exterior, side of the road, after midnight. Victoria slowly struts towards Stiff's lifeless body. The camera moves up her legs, stopping at her lower back, revealing a leather-holstered bladed instrument. She unclasps it and brings her arm to her side, revealing a customized meat cleaver. She moves on Stiff's body, kneeling over him. The ladies are a virtual peanut gallery gawking at Victoria's every move. Victoria raises the cleaver above her head and brings it down like a windmill. Whoa! Whoa. Victoria rises with her new prize, Officer Stiff's right hand. There it is. There's the move. Interior sedan, after midnight. Victoria gets back into the car. Feel good? I'm seriously impressed, Mum. I never had a doubt. Victoria tosses Stiff's hand into Paris's lap in the back seat. You keep that. Gross, I don't want this. Why? You were the one rooting for it to happen. Now let's get the fuck out of here. The car peels out into the distance, leaving the carnage in a thin veil of tire smoke. Title card. The Magistrate's Inn. The Bloody Brothel. Fade to black. Title on screen. Victoria the Governess. Animated comic book sequence begins. Exterior. Castle Market. Medieval Times. Day. An astute female voice with a British accent shares Victoria's story. Since the 1300s, Victoria has been on the run. Moving from country to country, continent to continent, living a shadowy life of crime. We see Victoria as a young woman in her late teens, early twenties. She's dressed in modest, plain peasant clothes. She drifts through a bustling local market. It's loud. Animal calls and the chatter of trade and barter fill the air. She moves in a way to not draw attention to herself. She double-checks over her shoulder before stealing a piece of fruit off a vendor's cart. She's quick to an alleyway to devour her prize, away from prying eyes. She takes a bite. Content. It's the first thing she's eaten in days. One way or another you're gonna pay for that. Victoria spins around to see a grizzled-looking man with missing teeth standing before her brandishing a knife. You sound so sure. No such thing as a free apple, you little cunt. <laughs> Come and get it. The vendor laughs. A giant henchman grabs Victoria from behind with a surprise bear hug. She tries to let out a scream, but can't. The henchman lifts her up, bringing her within reach of the vendor. The fruit hits the ground. Ha ha ha! Let's have a look under here to see if there's anything else that's mine. He pokes at her clothes with his knife. Without hesitation, Victoria uses the heel of her boot to smash the toes of the henchman. Gah! He drops his grip on her. The vendor wields the knife, which Victoria easily deflects. She counters with a headbutt square to his nose, which gets the blood flowing. Bitch! Sweeping his legs, she backs the vendor against the alley wall. He tries to resist, but she delivers a mean right cross to his jaw, knocking him out. She grabs the vendor's knife. The henchman is back to his feet and quick to advance on Victoria. Her timing is perfect as she turns to greet him with a knife and scores a direct hit to his groin. His screams echo the alley. She's drawn too much attention. Several people gather at the alley's entrance. Victoria delivers a swift kick to the henchman's head before rummaging the two fallen men for valuables. She's quick to scurry off in the opposite direction. Raised as a fighter, she could handle herself. But by the time she reached the age of a physical maturity, which, in her case, was the human age of 42, her power was formidable. But so was the resolve of her enemies. War was always being waged in the criminal underground, and she could no longer go it alone. Victoria needed an army. Fade to black. Exterior. Old colonial ranch house. Day. A group of half a dozen women sits on the porch of the house. The scene is bright and regal. A horse and buggy with a flatbed attached to it pulls up to the house and is loaded up with crates of moonshine. In the early 1700s, Victoria got what she needed. She manufactured and distributed the famous Aunt Maisie Spirit brand, a business made up entirely of women. The group operated an industrial-sized farm in the countryside of Her Majesty's Kingdom. They were known as the Magistrates, and they were bound by loyalty and a sense of duty to the common good. The driver of the wagon hands one of the women a satchel of money. He nods to Victoria with the tip of his hat. 
a gesture she reciprocates. Under the surface, however, they were badass immortal killers trained to protect their self-interests against human and immortal enemies alike.